Hi everyone, my name is Zuzanna Jeftuszek. I'm Polish and I teach Polish as a foreign. And today I would like to invite you to discover the mystery of Polish cases with me, because really Polish cases are very interesting and they are, they are not so difficult as you think. They are really easy and it's easy to use them. So uh, at the beginning, I would like to say that it's been a long time. I haven't been speaking English, so I'm sorry for mistakes. So for beginning, we have to know what basically is a grammatical case. So cases indicate the grammatical function of nouns and pronouns according to the relation with rest of the words in a sentence. So according to this definition, you, you might think that basically, according to this definition, in every single language, there are cases. And according to modern linguistics, yeah, it's it's almost that. It's true because uh, mostly people think uh, that uh, a case is when you change the ending of the word. And in Polish, it works like that, but it doesn't have to really, because in English, people says uh, people say say there there is no cases, but yeah, there. Are. Uh, we'll, we will talk about it later. So, um, what cases do we have in Polish? In Polish, we have seven cases and we use all of them. Uh, some people say we don't use vocative case, vowage. Uh, it's true, but it's not <laughs> because um, we use it in official situations when we, uh, when we talk with, uh, with uh, our parents. With, when we talk in, uh, I don't know, any official situations at university, at work, and so on. So, yeah, it's not true. But uh, on a daily basis, when we talk to friends, we don't use it. But still, it's nice to recognize it. So, yeah, we have seven cases. We use all of them. For now, that's uh, the point. And uh, you have two lists, two orders of cases. Why do we have uh, different orders? Basically, we as Poles at school, we learn uh, the order which is on the left. Why? Because, just because. Uh, <laughs> in past years, there were a lot of books and in different books, there were a different order and it basically doesn't matter because uh, the order of cases uh, doesn't say us anything. So we can, we can know them in different order. But the thing is, um, how we use it in the sentence. So never mind uh, if we know the order or, or we don't, never mind. So we uh, at school, we learn this uh, order on left, but if you learned uh, Polish as a foreign, you po probably learned it in, um, in the order on the right. Why? Because the order of, uh, on the right is uh, its order, uh, by usage. So uh, we use uh, a lot of uh, uh, instrumental case, a lot of, of, a lot of accusative case and genitive case. So that's why they are at the beginning. Uh, and also uh, it's by uh, the easiest one is at the beginning because uh, we want to start speaking as fast as it's possible. So we use the easiest ones and then uh, dif more difficult and more difficult. So we are going to explore our cases today uh, with the um, with the order on the, on the right. And probably probably you know that uh, if it comes about nominative case, uh, mostly we learn nominative case case first, but only uh, singular. <laughs> I'm sorry, only singular uh, a nominative case. And at the end, we learn plural. Why? Because plural is a little bit difficult, but you can just learn it by heart. And after that, it's easier. OK, but today I won't show you how we form all the uh, cases because we don't have enough time to do so. Uh, at, the, uh, at the end, I will show you uh, helpful resources when you can find all the tables of declination and so on and so on. And for now, we, uh, I will just um, 
introduce you how we use all of the cases. And here, it doesn't matter, it's singular or a plural, we use all of them in same uh, situations. So uh, to understand well, when we use uh, which uh, case, it's really fine to know what, uh, what really uh, the names of case mean. For example, Mianovnik, uh, we have an, uh, a word Miano, which is an old name uh, of name. It's an old noun, we don't use it, so don't use uh, the word Miano now, but it's not uh, nice to remember that it means name. Why? Because we use uh, this uh, case to name things like we we just feel like a baby right oh what is it it's an apple what is an apple an apple is a fruit right so we create uh we name things around us we create definitions and so on so uh that's the second part you can see to if we have a, a word to in a sentence to jest ruja it's a rose uh ruja to and here could be, but it, uh, it doesn't have to be. Yes, kwiat. Ruja to jest kwiat. Uh, a rose is a flower, right? So uh, we use it to create a definition. So that's why we we have to know this uh, case just to ask what is it? It's something, 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 um, and so on. So um, I think you probably know that uh, nominative case is a case of subject. Uh, in about 90% of usage, we use nominative case as a subject of a sentence. We can use a different uh, cases, but it's not so common. So for now, it's easier to remember that we use it just, uh, just as a subject. For example, nauczyciel mówi, teacher is saying. And we use it also uh, to make comparisons like, uh, but it should be comparisons where we uh, compare things that are equal. And we use the word jak. On jest wysoki jak antek. On jest tak samo wysoki jak antek. Tak samo equal. He is as tall as antek. We can add tak samo, equal, but we don't have to. But the thing is, always when you use jak, uh, it's gonna be nominative case, and it's me, it means equal. And we use it in uh, exclamations, right? Like, uh, such a nice weather, what a beautiful day, etc. So we use the words, word uh, jaki, jaka, jakie, like jaka ładna pogoda, what a nice weather, or uh, co za piękny dzień, uh, what a nice day. We use these two constructions, jaki, jaka, jaki, or co za, plus uh, noun. Uh, and it's an exclama uh, exclamation. And uh, we use here nominative case. Okay, let's go to second, a very important uh, case, if you want to introduce yourself. It's an uh, instrumental case. And basically, narzędzie, because the case in Polish uh, it's a narzędnik, instrumental case is narzędnik. So narzędzie means instrument or tool. And uh, we use it. When we talk about all the tools, <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think you are not uh, so uh, surprised that we use it as a tool because for example, when in English we say, oh, I will do it with hammer, zrobię to młotkiem. We don't use any preposition, we just use our in instrumental um, case and it's everything is clear for us because this case uh, represents this uh, situation, we understand it. Okay, so uh, that's the first usage, but we can use it also uh, to introduce uh, ourselves, who we are, and we can basically say, uh, say everything like, Jestem nauczycielem, I'm a teacher. Jestem Polakiem, I'm Polish. Uh, jestem kobietą, I'm a woman. Uh, jestem, and any, any noun, doesn't matter. And here it's gonna be instrumental case. 
But remember, we had the construction to yes and nominative case because it's a uh, we name a thing to yes something, and here we talk about who we are, who is a person, etc. etc. So we have a different case because it's a little bit different situations. There we can say it was a definition. Here we just introduce. Okay, so the next thing is uh, where, a location, где. And if it comes about location, we can use three uh, or even four different uh, cases, depending on context. And if we say где, we can say под ушкем, under the bed, uh, над реком, uh, by the river. And these two prepositions are always with... Uh, instrumental case because we have in at etc uh there are um they they are connected with uh locate locative case so not now so we have a group of verbs also which indicate uh let's say conduction like uh, we can conduct something we can conduct a machine we can conduct uh uh, a group of people, etc. There are a lot of verbs like that. For example, it's kierować, uh, for example, drive a car or uh, conduct a company. So, kieruje firmą, kim czym, rządzić, it's also conduct by, uh, but mostly uh, a country, etc. So, kto rządzi krajem? President Jonji Krajem, right? The president uh, conduct country. And uh, a very, very important thing is a companionship because uh, instrumental case, it's really often connected with Z, uh, which can be translated into English as with. So if we have a companionship, for example, pracuje z Bartkiem, so I work, uh, I worked with uh, Bartek, I despsem, I walk with, uh, with the dog, then it's always instrumental case. If we have companionship, there is al always instrumental case. Okay, so the mostly used uh, case in Polish language is accusative case. Why it's third? It's because at the beginning we would like to know uh, what things are, so what is it, etc. So a nominative case. Then we would like to introduce ourselves, but then almost everything you can say just with this case. <laughs> really, uh, it's so widely used uh, that it's really hard to say when we use it. But mostly, uh, first of all, I would like to say that bierne, because in Polish accusative case uh, is biernik, bierne means passive. So you probably won't be surprised if I, if I tell you that uh, we use it to create, uh, to form a passive voice. Uh, how do we, uh, how we do it? So basically you can remember that um, accusative case in Polish language uh, always, almost always um, introduce uh, indirect object and to form a passive voice we need an indirect object which uh, in passive voice uh, will be a subject of the sentence right so how does it work in polish language basically we have uh, for example uh, a sentence ja czytam książkę right książkę kogo co it's accusative case and if we want to form a passive voice it's gonna be a uh, we need to change uh, places. That's the first thing because uh, book has to be a subject of the sentence and then an object sh should be me because I read. So we change places, but we have to change cases because as we remember the definition, case uh, indicate role uh, in the sentence. So, uh, Subject is in nominative case, so książka jest czytana przeze mnie, by me. So we changed uh, these two cases, we changed place and we changed pl uh, cases. Okay, we have uh, a group of verbs which, indicates posi which indicate positive feelings, like kochać, love, uh, lubić, like, uh, uh, admire, and so on, and so on. 
uh, and these cases, uh, uh, and in these cases, we use we also use uh, uh, accusative case, and it's really uh, important to remember that because right uh, right away we will uh, talk about genitive case. Then you will uh, know why. So for now, we have to remember that positive feelings are always with accusative. So, kocham, anie, lubię ten samochód, etc. Then we have sen senses. All the senses are connected with accusative case. So, widzę książkę, e, czuję kwiat, e, słyszę was, etc., etc. And then we have a group of uh, verbs which indicate pain <laughs> it's really funny because we had a group of verbs which indicate positive feelings and now we have verbs which indicate pain but uh, yeah it's really important to remember especially if we are russian or ukrainian because there are a lot of mistakes uh, in these languages so yeah boli mnie głowa piecze go ręka so uh, kogo co not komu czemu but kogo co accusative ca case always and all verbs which indicate doing something do create etc etc et so uh, a cook everything which is connected with doing something like we have a product of our work uh, will be with accusative case so robię sałatkę Ty niszczysz świat. Oh, niszczysz is basically <laughs> destroy, but yeah, it's connected with doing. It's an opposite. Uh, all of these opposites are with accusative case as well. So uh, basically, it's the widely used, uh, the most uh, widely used uh, case in Polish language. So it's really hard to say when we use it. So. If you are not sure which case should should you use, you can also uh, always say uh, something in accusative case, and it's like sixty percent that it's gonna be right because it's a really widely uh, used case. Then we have the pełniacz, and it's really interesting because do pełnić do pełniacz means to fill up, and why uh, why this name? because it fill up uh, it fills up uh, accusative case because we had positive feelings we have uh, we had a lot of verbs uh, which are connected with accusative verbs and if we do in a, a negative form we use genitive case <laughs> so ja kocham anie ja nie kocham kogo czego ani mam samochód nie mam Samochodu. Uh, it's a really easy rule, but a lot of people, uh, I think, uh, forget about it. So please remember that if we have no in a sentence uh, and it was with accusative case, then it's gonna be genitive case always. Then we have quantity. Every single uh, phrase which indicate quantity, like kilogram jabłek, dużo ludzi, a lot of people, uh, I don't know, uh, a bottle of water, butelka wody, uh, it's always gonna be genitive case. Like you see quantity, genitive case, 100% sure. And there, as I told you, we can use a lot of cases with uh, places. So here we have skąd and dokąd. So, jestem z Polski, I'm from Poland. Wracam od kolegi, I coming back from my friend. Or we can also say, idę do, jadę do Polski, I'm going to Poland. Wra uh, idę do kolegi, I'm going to my friend, right? So if we have from whom and to, to where, from where to where, so skąd, dokąd, it's always gonna be genitive case. Okay, oh, not always, because uh, it can be like, for example, w góry, in mountains, it can be accusative case, I'm sorry, but almost always it's gonna be genitive case. 
And we have prepositions, which are always connected with a genitive case, and it's bez, dla, do, koło, od, oprócz, u. Uh, mostly, I think you know bez without, dla, for, uh, do, tu, like uh, I'm going to Poland, I'm going to my friend, and so on. Uh, od, from, uh, u, by, I, I buy my mother, jestem u mojej mamy, right? Okay, and now we can switch to miejscownik, so locative case. Miejsce means place, location, place. So first of all, we talk about location, so where. And here we have to remember that we use it with uh, in, on, at, so w, na, uh, na przykład, uh, for example, jestem w domu, I'm at home, leżę na plaży, I'm uh, on the beach, etc. Uh, second part is uh, all the expressions of time, so when, kiedy, w maju, in May, o 15, at 3 p.m., etc., etc. So hours, months, uh, days of the week, etc., etc., uh, these are uh, all connected with a locative case because basically we place something in the time in the calendar right so you can uh, it's still connected with place let's say and we have a group of verbs connected with thinking like myśleć, sądzić, uh, uważać. Uh, myślę teraz o Oli I, I'm thinking about Ola right now uh, co sądzisz o nim? What do you think of him? Etc., uh, etc. Et so when we talk about our opinion, about our dreams also, marzę o, uh, marzę o wielkiej podróży. I, I, I dream about a big uh, adventure, right? Etc., etc. And uh, all the verbs connected with knowing something. So uh, get to know, know about something, uh, be informed about something, etc., etc. Uh, wiem o teście. I know about uh, exam. Uh, informują o dacie. They inform about the date of something, etc., etc. It's always gonna be a locative case. And now we can switch to a dative case, celownik. Uh, basically, celować means to aim. So that's why we have uh, this uh, picture, just to remember what does it, uh, what is uh, what it means. And uh, if we use a construction connected with feelings, but when we have jest and feeling, for example, jest mi smutno, I'm sad. Like in Polish, directly, it's like it's sad to me. But of course, I know in English we, we, we won't say it like that. But yeah, um, yes plus feeling, it's going to be dative case. And if we, um, everything connected with giving, uh, if with giving, but also uh, an opposite. So if uh, with taking something, daje uh, mamie present, I'm giving a gift to my mother. Zabieram bratu książkę, I'm taking a book from my brother, uh, etc., etc. So it's a mm, case connected with uh, everything which is uh, like aimed into a person, right? So giving, uh, aim, <laughs> aiming, but also saying, powiedz mi to, say it to me, przypomnij ani o tym, uh, uh, Oh, I forget how to say przypomni in English. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let, let's let's pass. Oh, re remind, right? Uh, so remind uh, Anya about it, right? So let's say um, it's a group of verbs connected with saying, and when we evoke emotions, uh, so. What does it mean, evoke emotions? It means that uh, something or someone just uh, evokes some emotions on you. So first of all, it evokes that you trust him or that you want to thank him. 
So that's why we have a uh, nie ufaj Kacprowi, don't trust Kacper. Uh, dziękuję tacie. I I think I, I'm grateful to my father and so on and so on. Uh, there is a lot of um, verbs connected with this uh, emotions like pomagać, uh, współczuć, so uh, feel, uh, feel, uh, feel alike, it's, and so on and so on. And now uh, we have uh, prepositions. Przeciw, ku, dzięki, e, wbrew, na przekór. E, zrobiłem to wbrew mamie. I, may, uh, I made it even though my mother didn't want to, right? Against my mother uh, and so on. So it's like uh, really often there are some verbs which are connected with doing something against someone. And these prepositions are like przeciw, na przekór, wbrew. These are prepositions connected with doing something against. So uh, you can um, remember there uh, that all kind of strikes, uh, doing something against is connected with a uh, dative case. Okay. Wołacz, the last um, case. And here we don't have a lot to say, uh, to say because it's vocative case. So wołacz means call someone we use it to call someone to um attack attention right so uh for example when we don't use it i told you that um in uh, modern language on uh, on a daily basis with our friends we don't use this case because um people usually say janek poczekaj na mnie oh uh, janek uh, wait for me but uh we could also say janku so that would be a vocative case. Janku, poczekaj na mnie. And it's nice. You can find it in books. But uh, younger people don't use it. I use it. Uh, my Some of my friends use it. But uh, my brother, who is seven years younger than me, uh, don't use it at all. With friends, of course. Because in formal situations, for example, with professor, you have to use it. Because... Uh, because um, when you say Panie prof pan profesor popatrz tutaj it's uh, it's a little bit rude it sounds a little bit rude to me maybe uh, in few years it's it's not going to be so but for now it, it sounds a little bit rude so you say panie profesorze and it's really kind really nice etc so uh, yeah, in formal situations, we still use it. We still use it with uh, names of family. Uh, so, uh, for example, we don't say mama. We say mamo. Mamo, pomożesz mi? Mam, would you help me? Uh, tato, babciu, etc. But uh, we don't use it with uh, uh, brothers, sisters, and cousins because they're like our friends, right? It's uh, this a little bit uh, less official uh, language, so we don't use it. We don't say bracie, we say brat, if we, because very often we just use a name, uh, but in a very, very um, um, uh, in official situation, we can just say, oh, brat, pomożesz mi? But it's like, um, it's not really uh, correct, but we use it sometimes. Okay, and we have five minutes. So for now, I would like to um, introduce uh, to you some uh, differences between languages, uh, which have cases for now, so Slavic languages, uh, Russian and Ukrainian mostly, because uh, these are two which I know. So first of all, almost every Russian and Ukrainian forget about uh, the change. When we have negation with accusative case, in Russian, it's just accusative case. In Polish, it's genitive case. So remember about it. Then we have preposition po. And in Polish, it can, uh, it can be uh, used with two cases, with locative or accusative. And dep it, it depends on meaning because 
Uh, if we have locative case, uh, it means uh, that something is moving on something. Like, for example, popodwodze. In Russian, it's going to be popol, popolu. Uh, and in English, it's just going to be on the floor. Like, uh, I don't know, uh, the child is running on the floor. In Polish, we would say po podwodze with locative case. In Russian, papalu with that is case with that if case. And in uh, if we use accusative case, uh, it's gonna be uh, a little completely different meaning because it's for example, uh, I go uh, to shop to buy something like ide do sklepu po chleb to buy bread. And uh, in Russian, we can use za, za chlebom. So uh, right now, uh, you have to remember that we have two different meanings where uh, the cases are different. So in Russian, very often I see mistakes because people just don't remember that we have, uh, in Russian, there are two prepositions. In Polish, it's just one. So people just are a little bit, uh, uh, not uh, not sure which which one should they use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just please remember. And the second thing is in Polish language we have o o, like I think about, I talk about, but it can be also I don't know. We have a lot of o. So o and ask about, and we have pitach o. Kogo co, accusative case. Uh, but we say mówić o kim czym, locative case. In Russian, it's always locative case. So it's really hard uh, to remember when we use which case. That's uh, That has been just learned by, by heart because it's impossible to learn in, the, in a different way. Then we have uh, bitch plus adjective. Uh, which in Polish it's a nominative case, but if we, uh, but in Russian it's gonna be instrumental case. In Poland, no. In Polish, no. For example, jestem szczęśliwa. Uh, it, uh, it, and so on. And uh, we talked about uh, pain. In Polish, it's dative case. In Ukrainian, it's. Uh, Oh, uh, in Polish, it's accusative case. In Ukrainian, it's dative. I'm sorry, it's dative. So it's really important to remember because it's a small difference, but it is. And uh, means of transport in Polish are for us like a, like a, like as instruments, as tools. Uh, but in Russian, we use na plus locative case. So it's a little bit differently. We just see it in a different way. And then we have a few common verbs like używać, potrzebować, szukać, and słuchać, which in Pol uh, Polish are in genitive case, but in, Rus uh, in Russian, in Ukrainian, they are connected with accusative case. And now we have Romance languages, uh, French and Italian, and we can see that the uh, a pour, uh, and in Italian, di, a per, uh, are, let's say, equivalents of Polish genitive because we can say beaucoup de uh, and in Polish in, it's gonna be dużo kogo czego uh, uh, for example fait de quelque chose fait d'or zrobiony z ze złota z kogo czego être de Pologne być z kogo czego z Polski Pour plus, uh, plus place, it's going to be uh, Ide do kogo czego, uh, do, jadę do Paryża, pour Paris, etc. etc. Uh, and we have avec, which is uh, almost always uh, going to be instrumental case. But the thing is, we have uh, avec quelque chose, uh, avec quelqu'un, avec quelque chose, z czymś, z kimś, or fair. Uh, faire quelque chose avec uh, quelque chose. Robić coś z, uh, robić coś czymś. For example, uh, as I told you uh, earlier, uh, do it with hammer, right? Po Polsku, uh, in Polish, we, we would just say młotkiem. 
we without any preposition. And direct object is gonna be accusative case as in English, uh, uh, but not always. Okay, uh, in English it's uh, almost same. So if we have to and destination, it's going to be do plus genitive case. If it's uh, to plus person, it's going to be dative case, like say to Kacper, powiedz to Kacprowi. Uh, but we have to Laura, but uh, to Laura uh, in the first um, first example, it's uh, a destina destination, right? To her house. That's why uh, we use do Laure. Nie lauże, because we go to her, to her place, right? Like that. Okay. And uh, from, it's like z od, it's exactly same. So it's going to be the uh, genitive case. And with, same as avec in French, instrumental case. Exactly same, uh, two same examples. And now Chinese, which is really interesting, very interesting, because uh, we have. Uh, Three constructions with uh, which in Polish is gonna be translated with uh, bitch, so uh, be. Uh, to jest, so we have to jest nauczyciel, uh, lauszy, nominative case. Uh, lauszy, on jest nauczycielem, so who we are, the second rule. And uh, ta hen gao xing. So here in Chinese we have a different, let's say, be. Uh, because it's uh, uh, adjective, right? So if we have adjective, we always have nominative case. Uh, in Chinese, it's really easy. If you speak Chinese, it's really easy to remember when we have accusative, uh, when we have nominative case, when we have instrumental. Also, yong, uh, which means uh, do something, uh, can be used uh, as an instrumental case. It's exactly the same. Uh, Example like do it with hammer. It's exactly the same example. Uh, and the like lausze de shu książka nauczyciela genitive case. So for now it's all because um, we don't have more time. So here are helpful resources. Po polsku po polsce it's a website. Polski na wynos a second website. Uh, you can find here everything really about Polish grammar. And there we have Praktyczny Słownik Łączliwości Składniowej Czasowników Polskich. It's in Polish, but it's really helpful. You have a lot of verbs with every, sim uh, every single uh, case possible with, uh, changing me uh, with uh, meaning changing and so on and so on. And Gramatyka Języka Polskiego dla Cudzoziemców. This is a really, really interesting book uh, because um, there are every single exception, I think. Okay, and now uh, your questions. I see that um, I have some questions. So let's start with the first one. Uh, jak możesz pamiętać wszystkie formy? Rozumiem teorię, ale pamiętać nie mogę. E, niestety e, to jest bardzo trudne. E, my pamiętamy, bo jesteśmy Polakami. E, jeżeli nie pamiętasz form, po prostu musisz dużo czytać, dużo oglądać i rozmawiać. Wtedy one przyjdą naturalnie. W większości przypadków są regularne, więc nie jest tak źle. Ok. By quantity, do you mean uh, countable? Not. Not, not, uh, not only. Because, uh, let's say, we have, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe shared, like it's countable. Uh, And we can say uh, dużo koszul, okay, but we can say dużo cukru, a lot of sugar. So it's uh, by quantity, I mean every quantity you qu quantity you say. So uh, it can be a package, paczka, butelka, bottle, uh, I don't know, uh, jar, słoik, kogo czego. It can be um, every single. Uh, I don't know, kilogram, uh, centimeter, uh, and, and so on and so on. Uh, it can be also a kawałek, a piece, uh, every single word which, uh, which gives you quantity, indicate quantity, will be connected with genitive case, no matter if it's countable or, or uncountable uh, noun. Okay. Why do we ask gdzie idziesz instead of dokąd idziesz? So basically, 
<laughs> um, the pure uh, version of this question is Dokont Ijesh, and it's really, really pure and you can use it. Uh, but uh, during years, we just used to use Gdzie Idziesz, just because it's easier for us, but you can use both, both are correct for now. Okay, uh, in your opinion, is Polish harder than Russian for a non-Slavic language speaker? Uh, no, I think it's easier. I think it's easier because first of all, you don't have, um, it depends uh, what language you speak, but uh, you know, alphabet uh, al um, alphabet is easier because it's a Latin alphabet. Uh, if it comes about, about phonetics, uh, it depends. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's a little bit harder, but not so, not so hard. Uh, it, it, if it comes about grammar, um, at some level, Russian is really harder than Polish. Uh, we in Poland say that uh, Russian is really easy, but um, at some level, it's not so easy. So I think Polish is a little bit easier. Okay, I think the, these are all questions. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and see you in rooms or somewhere. <laughs>